everybody, how's it going? My name is Leo, also known as Noctef, and today, folks, we have quite the tutorial for you. So I was playing Sea of Thieves once again, and I noticed that the way to do caustics is just incredible. The caustics actually lives in the rolled space and not on the local space. This means that as you put the caustic effect on different meshes, the caustic blends with itself. It looks like one continuous light array coming from the surface and casting the caustics just like it happens in real life. So, leveraging the new feature from Unreal 5, the overlay materials, I thought, hey, this looks like a pretty good opportunity for us to whip out a really great looking caustic material. This adapts to the scale of the mesh, this adapts to the size and rotation, so it always looks the right way up. You can apply this to any mesh and it's always going to work. It's a beautiful effect and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Alrighty folks, here we are on the Unreal Editor. I have a couple of underwater looking assets here that I got from the Unreal Marketplace. I got these for free a while ago. I'll leave the link of these assets on the description. And you can see here that we have uh, this rock with the caustic effect applied to it. There's a couple of properties here that I wanna highlight. First one, we are using a Unreal 5 feature called Overlay Materials. So this means that I can get any of these rocks here. So I have my caustics material. I have this rocks. If I search for overlay, I can drag and drop this into here. Now you don't need to use this feature. Okay. You could easily turn this intro material function and add it to materials that you want to have the caustics on. And you can see here some other stuff that first, much like in Sea of Thieves, you can see here that caustics only apply to about half of the prop. So if I rotate my prop here, you can see the caustics they kind of fade away a little bit towards the bottom so you can see the caustics very strongly since the light hits from the sky down right this is what causes the caustic effect but um, it's rotation agnostic. Something else, if I duplicate this rock and I kind of move it over here, you're gonna notice that these caustics, they're actually aligned to rolled space. So as they move about, you can see here that they kind of follow each other and the pattern completes itself. Now this is relevant because if you think about it, how it works in real life, it makes perfect sense, right? Like the light is hitting from the world and casting rays and the refraction from the water is what causes these caustics to appear so this makes perfect sense now the way we're gonna do this is that we're gonna use a lot of rolled space shenanigans to make these uvs work because then you can apply this to anything i can put this into the shark here the overlay material and you can see the uv of the shark has no input on how this looks like so now my shark has these caustics here that work perfectly with him and the scale also doesn't matter you can see here that if i make it a egregiously large it works all the same i can rotate my shark about so on and so forth and the same goes for these little rocks here if i am doing like set dressing and i want to make them bigger or smaller you can see here that the caustics respect that let's build it it's actually kind of simple so first things first i'm using this texture here which is my caustic texture this is something that i quickly whipped up on photoshop i applied a chromatic aberration filter to it and then i put it into stable diffusion to make it tile on all ends so this actually is a tiling texture i'll also put this texture up for you to download on my website so the link is going to be in the link in the description so if you want to grab this texture for yourself you can no strings attached so let's create a new material and go to the graph to actually make this thing happen all right so we have the graphic open the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to take it from surface and uh, we're actually going to leave it at surface but we're going to take it from opaque and put it as translucent actually we're going to make it additive and from default lit we're going to make it unlit so now we only have the emissive color and the opacity so the first thing we want to do, if I go back to my caustic effect here, is that you can see that the caustics themselves, the actual texture panning over them, it is in rolled space, right? It's not on local space. As I move it here, you can see that I'm the caustic effect is not locked to the object. 
So to do that, this means that our texture needs to be aligned to roll space and use the roll space position as their UV. So let's actually do that. Of course, the first node we're gonna need is roll space, right? Rolled position, absolute rolled position. Here we go. This is our main little bread and butter here of the effect. What we're gonna do here is that uh, we are going to divide it by a scalar because this value is actually huge. Like if I just do a debug vector, oops, float three values, and we start previewing this node here, you can see that these values are gonna be absolutely nutty, you know? They don't look nutty here, but uh, I think this is because the floats are truncating and bugging out because of how huge they are. It's perhaps better illustrated if I put this on the emissive material, and if I put here on this little rock, you can see that the rock is glowing out of control because these values are huge and we can't really work with these huge values. It's very hard to work with these huge values. So the first order of business is that we're going to divide them. And I recommend you create a new parameter and we're going to call this UV scale. And you can put a pretty huge number here. In my case, I think I'm going to use something like 600 and we can adjust later if 600 is too high or too low. So now if I plug this into my emissive, you're going to notice that it's going to be a, a lot more manageable. So let's drop this here and you can see here that it's no longer, you know, glowing out of control, which is great. Exactly what we wanted. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to make two sets of UVs here. So for that, we're just going to duplicate this divide and we are going to divide it by the same UV scale. And now what we're going to do here is that, as you well know, if I create a UV coordinate here, you're going to quickly realize that the UV coordinate only has two colors, red and green, which means that it's a vector two. Now this little fella, uh, sure, it's going to be glowing out of control, but if I make it a Lit, uh, it has a blend of three colors. It's a vector three. So what we're going to do here is that we are going to do a component mask and we're going to mask the R and the G values here on this side. And on our second divide, we are also going to do a component mask, but instead of getting the R and the G channels, we're actually going to change it up. We're going to get just the G and the B. These are both vector twos now, but they are using different channels as their main inputs, but they are vector twos. And the interesting thing is that you can add two vector twos together to get something new. And it's still going to be a vector two, but now it uses the input of all three as is from our absolute world position. All right. So the next step is for us to use this UV channel that we just created to add some motion to our caustics texture. Now inside of our Unreal Engine, you're going to go here on the content browser and you see here we have settings, right? And you're going to enable show engine content. All right. Once you do that, you're going to go to your engine content and we're going to try to find here four way. Here we go. Motion underscore four way chaos. You're going to double click this. This is stock. It comes default with the engine, but it's not exposed by default. So with nothing selected, we have this little checkbox here, exposed to library. You're going to click that and you're going to save. Now here inside of our little fella tutorial caustic, you're going to add this motion for way chaos. And now you can see here that it's going to show up. If you don't do this, it's not going to show up by default. Okay. So you got to do this of going to the settings, show engine content, clicking on the engine folder and searching for way chaos and exposing it. All right, great. So now that we have done that, let's put our caustic noise here. It needs to be a texture object, not a sampler, an object. Let's put here our caustic noise. Great. So we're going to plug this into the texture node. And over here, we're going to plug this into the coordinate, which is a vector two. Great. So now if I start previewing this, you're already going to see some crazy motion here. And the interesting thing is that there's lots and lots of copies of this texture going on and they're all kind of going crazy on their own way. So we can control the speed here and I recommend exposing this. So let's put this caustic speed and uh, let's use a very low value. So let's use 0.15, very, very low because the caustics, they don't move a lot, right? They're very, very slow. They kind of move alongside the waves and such. So now this should be pretty much our whole graph here to get 
very early on version of this going. So now if I save this and I go here to my scene, let me actually, let's take this rock, let me duplicate it. And uh, we're going to put our tutorial caustic as the overlay material. And you can see here that it more or less already kind of works. And you can see it's aligned to road space. I can rotate it around. And it, once again, there's a little bit of distortion, but it does work. But um, it's just affecting the whole model. There isn't this neat transition here. And uh, that's the next step that we're going to do. So let's go back here to our material tutorial caustic. And uh, we're going to put just organizing a little bit. Great. So now we can move this to the side here. We're going to come back to this in a while, but uh, now let's create this transition. So the interesting thing here, if you think about how this transition works, is that it's essentially a gradient that goes vertically on this model specifically. And it is locked to the model. It is affected by rotation. So that means that as I rotate, you can see here that this gradient is still respected. So, so let's make it. So the way we're, we're going to make this here is that we're going to take our object position. Oops, sorry. <laughs> object position WS. Okay, great. So we're going to take this object position and we're going to actually take the world position. Well, we can just copy and paste this one and we're going to subtract one by the other. Now, why are we doing this? Essentially, we're going to use the world position to drive our gradient because we want this gradient to always be on the height as is. So the blue as is the little blue arrow here. We always want it to be alongside that as is, which is the height, but it needs to be locked to this object specifically. There is already a video where I go over screen space locked shaders and uh, that shader specifically, I also explain a little bit about the relationship of absolute world position and object position. So if you want to have a more in-depth look, the link will be in the description. There's also going to be a card flashing, so you can click there. But uh, the idea here is that by subtracting something on a Cartesian plane, you're also moving it. So we are moving the world position to be pivoted to the current object position whenever we subtract it. And uh, we also need to divide it by our object local bounds. And once again, the reason why we're doing this... Oh, uh, hold on. We can take this one, which is a material function version that's kind of clamped. So we're going to put this here, the local bound size. And the reason, once again, the absolute world position uses numbers that are way, way, way too big. So by dividing it by the scale of our object, well, the bounds is not really the scale, but kind of sorted. We are already fixing this. And remember what I said, we only care about the vertical gradient. So this vertical blue arrow here. So this means that we can go over here and we can do a component mask and we can select only the blue channel, which is the height as is. So now if I start previewing this node, you can see here that we have a nice gradient that goes vertically and I can put this on a sphere and it still works. It only goes vertically. The next step we're going to do is that we're going to do power. And this is just a way of us controlling this gradient. So by messing with the power, you can make the gradient stronger and weaker. A value that I found worked for example, 0.7 kind of looks good. And uh, finally, we're also going to do saturate to make sure that we cull any eventual negative values there. Now, this shader is emissive and additive, which means that white means that it's going to show up. Black, it's the same as fully translucent, so it's not going to show up. So we can multiply our caustics by this gradient. And if we go back here, da -da 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 -da, we already have our caustics having a gradient. But there's a problem. There is still a problem. And that problem is, you can see here, this little fella, if I scale it up real big, the caustics, of course, are going to, you know, repeat themselves more because it's covering more of the surface of the world. But if I scale our new one that we just made, you're going to notice that the brightness is a lot higher. Why is that happening? Well, essentially, we are dividing this by the local bound size. So whenever we scale our object, the local bounds are going to be affected. Therefore, our division is going to change. The result of our division is going to change. So we've got to account for that. Now, a nice way that I found of doing it, which is actually rather simple, is that all we want to do 
is that we want to take our object scale, which is this little node here, and down here on our caustics, after we add it, what we can do is that we can do two things. First, I think it's nice to have a generic control over the intensity of the caustics, so we can create a new variable and call it intensity. Now, everything multiplied by one is itself, so we can put this on a default value of one, and multiply these together. And now, what we can do as well is that we can take our object scale scale and we can take a divide node and we can divide our object scale by one which is going to get us a ratio now that we have this ratio if we multiply this ratio by our caustics what's going to happen is that uh, oops oh wait <laughs> oops sorry <laughs> hold on we, we want to do this on this result here i apologize i was kind of doing it on the on the wrong note here we want to do it here from this result onwards so as i was saying when we multiply this by this ratio think about it if our object scale is four divided by one this is going to be 0.25 so it's automatically going to multiply our intensity of our caustics by 0.25 this kind of calls out this object local bounds issue that we were having. So now if I save this and I go over here, you can see here that as we make our object super crazy big, it is actually always upkeeping the intensity. But now if I make it too big, the intensity gets a little bit <laughs> too weak. So to fix this problem where if we scale it super huge, our caustics disappear, but uh, on more regular sizes, everything looks okay. To fix this last bit of issue, what we're gonna do here is after our divide, we're going to do a remap. So currently the lowest value we can get is super close to zero, but uh, we actually don't want this to be the case. We want to have a floor of how low it can go that brings everything back to baseline. So in this case here, Let's try 0.15 and it's going to be between 0.15 and 1. And if I plug this into our multiply, it essentially means that the lowest our caustics can be is 0.15. So even if I scale it really huge to where it's unreasonably large, you can see here that our caustics are still very much fine. So this is great, for example, if this was the terrain of the seafloor, you can see here that the caustics are still being applied without a problem. All right. So this is pretty much it folks. This is how you get this thing to roll and uh, you can see here It looks pretty convincing. It looks pretty good. It works really well It works with pops and you know everything else and uh, yeah It's far more efficient to render than something like light functions, which is a popular way of doing this Once again, you can use this either as a material overlay or you can take all of these little things and turn them into a material function and just slap them into your generic materials on the emissive channel and that would also work just as well so yeah this is how you get a sea of thieves style well this is really any style of caustics would work right but sea of thieves is just kind of like the example that inspired me the most so yeah folks thank you for watching Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to check out our Discord server. We always have new stuff down there. The link is going to be on the description. And also let us know in the comment section what tutorial you want next. If you had any issues following along, don't be afraid to reach out. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.